I'm Eli Hasama. I'm pleased to be speaking in this series, The Ethics of Song, at the University of Toronto Center for Ethics. I'd like to thank Laura Menard for her kind assistance. The song I've selected for this occasion is titled Deep River. It's believed to be first published in 1883 in a volume titled The Story of the Jubilee Singers by J.B.T. Marsh. It's an African-American spiritual recorded by a number of singers, including Marian Anderson, Paul Robeson, Mahalia Jackson, Sister Thea Bowman, and Lorraine Hunt Lieberson. I'd like to think about Marian Anderson's exquisite 1938 recording of an arrangement by the composer Harry T. Burley in relation to what the philosopher Michelle Moody Adams has called unsung agents. In her brilliant paper, Repairing the Raft and Staying Afloat, Philosophy, Race, and Gender, Moody Adams writes, I want to show that social and political philosophy is most valuable when it involves a genuinely dialogic engagement with the thought of those tireless, passionate, and dedicated agents who make progress happen. Moody Adams draws the adjectives tireless, passionate, and dedicated from Dr. Martin Luther King's 1961 speech, The Future of Integration. She continues, moreover, we should be dialogically engaged with the moral visionaries who drive moral progress, visionaries like King and Nelson Mandela, and like Angela Davis or Michelle Alexander, as well as the often unsung agents who help to put those visions into practice. The contralto Marian Anderson was not unsung. She enjoyed decades of professional acclaim during a distinguished international career performing art songs, spiritual arrangements, and opera. But as an African-American performer of classical music, she repeatedly experienced the searing pain of prejudice. Although Anderson was sometimes reluctant to engage with racism directly, through her performances and long-standing support of African-American composers and musicians, she etched a legacy of resistance to the bias that confronted her. Anderson's association with Harry T. Burley, H.T. Burley, dates to 1916 when she first appeared with him in performance. He was a great supporter for many years of her career. She was drawn to Burley's remarkable setting of the spiritual Deep River, which is in one version in the key of D flat major, a key that Farrah Jasmine Griffin calls dark and complex. Anderson performed this version and recorded it frequently. In his 1903 book, The Souls of Black Folk, W.E.B. Du Bois writes that the songs are indeed the siftings of centuries. The music is far more ancient than the words. And he includes in the text the words and melody of a song he says his grandmother sang. In a 1962 essay on spirituals, Anderson traces a lineage from the past to the present, observing that spirituals begun in slavery still have much to say to us. They have always been songs from the heart and soul. And more and more, in a larger, more frightening world, we must learn to speak from one soul to another. Anderson's initial declamation of the text, Deep River, My Home is Over Jordan, seems hesitant even as the grand rolled R's and perfectly controlled shimmering vibrato establish that the hesitancy is intentionally part of the dramatic curve of the song. In the second A section, as you'll hear, the narrative voice exhibits a growing confidence with the more active eighth notes flowing in the piano. The darkly rich sound she summons so exquisitely extends 
to the word Lord that is recolored on B flat rather than on the tonic or central note D flat, which gives the listener a sense of greater willingness to move into dramatic instability. Through her extraordinary ability to act with the voice, to borrow J.B. Steen's formulation in his magisterial tome, The Grand Tradition, 70 Years of Singing on Record, Anderson presents a second narrative voice in the contrasting section, Oh, Don't You Want to Go to the Gospel Feast, one that convinces the first voice to go to that promised land where all is peace. The final A section omits the previous glorying, glorious soaring high tonic note in over Jordan, with the speaker now ready to cross over into campground with another dark B flat. Note the striking setting of the words home and Lord to the later setting of peace, which employ modal mixture and a chromatic note, raised scale degree five. The idea of shaking up the tonic note D flat and the scale degree five A flat occurs at the word peace at the closing with an F major harmony, one that uses a natural, giving us not tonal peace, but an unsettled peace. At the final enunciation of the word Lord, there's a D natural instead of the home pitch D flat and again, the musical setting has an unexpected poignancy that Anderson uses to great effect in her acting with the voice. 
I'd like to close by honoring the work of another singer, Beverly Glenn Copeland, an unsung agent who is a composer, singer, and transgender activist, and who also performed a beautiful version of Deep River. Deep river, my home is over Jordan. Deep river, Lord, I want to cross. That gospel, gospel feast that promised land where all is peace. I want to cross over into campground. Glenn Copeland only last fall and was very moved by his story and amazing musicianship. I'm always interested in the stories of those whom history has missed. He and his amazing music deserve to be known much more widely and this year I've been sharing his music with my students. One of the first black students to attend McGill University enrolling in 1961 Glenn Copeland's work in electronic composition, songwriting, and performance deserves much greater renown. After I shared with my class the 2020 New Yorker article titled, Beverly Glenn Copeland's Music for a Future That Never Came, a senior at Columbia University, Hadley Calloway, spent an hour reading about him and listening to his music. She wrote me in an email later that day his latest album, Transmissions, is so beautiful that it brought me to tears. I am happy to have found his music. I'd like to close with Hadley's words about Glenn Copeland's music as an illustration of how songs can powerfully connect across years and geography, and how during these anxious times, they can provide a welcome sense of peace, kinship, and hope, beautifully illuminating the work of unsung agents. Hadley's writing about the song Ever New. The song Ever New builds slowly like a sunrise. 
Listening to it immerses me in a soundscape of soft synthesizers and looping hypnotic melodies. Living in New York, there's so much noise. I constantly hear sirens or my next door neighbor's voices. But the song is so mesmerizing that it smooths over any external noise until I almost can't hear it and the city becomes quiet. The lyrics in Ever New really speak to me as I prepare to graduate, move away, and enter adulthood. By expressing how we should welcome life's changes, both in nature and in ourselves, making us ever new, Glenn Copeland helps to quiet all of the nervous voices in my head that come along with this big life change. Glenn Copeland and I have lived different lives in different places and time periods, but there's a real kinship between us created through his music. I imagine his other listeners feel the same. <laughs>